you only can be done once you start as you don't want to play that game with yourself like but there's only really one option and the only button is either to like get more information or i'm zach hall and this is the mindset movement all right guys welcome back into the show here we got an amazing episode for you guys set up today right now we have kimberly kurt here on the phone with us and not in person but she's on the screen you can probably see her right there She's truly a real lady boss when it comes to her entire industry. She's shaking the whole thing right now and she's really getting her name out there. That's why I wanted to bring her on the show because she's somebody who truly understands her space. And what's kind of cool about it is there's not many women out there that are doing what she's doing. Um, so I, I really, really respect that. But uh, she, she blows up brands with consulting and digital marketing and she does a really fantastic job for it. We had to get her on the show so we could ask her a couple of questions. Kim, you're there with me, right? Yes, I'm right here. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Where can people follow you at? Because I'm sure we're by the end of the episode, once we drop all these knowledge bombs, people are going to want to come out and follow you. Right. Exactly. So the platform I'm the most active on is going to be Instagram. You can follow me at Kimber L K I. And then also my agency page is the Kimber agency like Timber, but with a K. So a little Kesha throwback, mm -hmm. but I've gotten that before. Yeah, they're at Kimber LKI or the Kimber Agency on Instagram, or if Facebook is more your style, Kimberly Kurt on Facebook. Good, great, 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 awesome. Um, one of the first things that I noticed when I first seen you out there shaking the space is you post on Instagram every day, sometimes multiple times, mm -hmm. and I I think that's awesome to do because it's a big thing when it comes to sales. And, mm -hmm. and on a principle, I like to talk about all the time, and that's the mere exposure effect. Yes. So you're constantly putting yourself in front of people and psychologically, whether they know it or not, they actually are starting to resonate with you and prefer you and trust you uh, without them even knowing it, the more that they see you. So I think that's an awesome thing that you do that a lot of people fail at. Um, big key to sales right there. But I mean, do you have a kind of a strategy behind the fact on why you're constantly posting on your platforms? Yeah. I mean, just exactly what you said, that exposure, but more, more than that is one just being out there, being in front of people's faces. But the more that you're putting out content, whether it is on stories, you may have seen, I do a lot of like mini trainings. I do a lot of like yep. little rants about things. I get on my stories a lot. I'm talking about something within the space or I'm just giving value in my Instagram caption. So the more that you do things, especially on audio or visual platforms, when people, when it's time to, buy they you don't need to do as much of a sales pitch because they feel like they already know you they already know what you offer so they're pretty much already bought in by the time that they contact you so that makes my job a lot easier granted posting to instagram every day in the beginning it might sound really hard but when you see that getting on sales calls you can close somebody in 18 minutes the last sales call i did i closed someone in 18 minutes and it was mm -hmm. like they already knew what I was about. They like went through my entire Instagram page. She was not shy. She's like, I scoped through everything that you were posting. And I really loved your vibe and I really liked everything about you. So it was extremely easy from that point on. So the more that you're in front of people, the easier your goals, are, like the easier whatever you're trying to sell or whatever experience you're trying to give is going to be in the long run. Right. And we get a lot of people who are just coming out saying that influencer marketing is dead. And obviously, like you're an influencer, you have a very big following there on Instagram, but it's not that influencer marketing is dead. Um, it's just got harder. Um, and when it gets harder, I usually look at that as a good opportunity because that means you can actually come in and, 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 and kill the market. And, and, and the, re the reason why it actually got harder was that the Instagram and Facebook algorithm switched, I believe it was last February or March, to only sending out your post to 14 to 20%. Um, of your following initially, and then based on how they react to that, um, then they'll send you out to more. But right. that means that we have to do like six to seven times the work as what we had to do a year and a half ago in order to get exposure. So you have so many people falling off the wagon saying influencer marketing is dead, when the case isn't really that. We just got to work a little bit harder. And once we actually get there to the top when it comes to influencing on, on these platforms like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter... Um, there's not much competition up there. It's actually better than it used to be because there's less competition. And that's what I see that you're doing. And that's pretty much the first thing I thought when I seen that you're posting constantly out there. Um, Cause a lot of people are missing and dropping the ball there uh, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
Uh, what was your website again there? I, I, I know it's, uh, you run an agency. Yes. So it is the Kimber agency slash homepage. Just got that up and running a few days ago. So very exciting to finally get that. You might've heard this, that when you first start a business, you should you know focus on the business itself and not making a fancy logo or a website. And so we're finally making a website now. And I, I'm very excited about it no, because it's too long. I would give people like my Instagram, like, well, this doesn't feel very professional, but that's where all my best information is. So we're excited. No, that's smart. That is, that's yeah. really, really, really smart. A lot of people will start off and uh, they'll focus on... The first thing I see most people do when they start a business is they'll start off They'll go out, they'll create a logo, then they'll build a website, then they'll get branded shirts, and they'll do all this, stickers, whatever. They do everything except working on the business. And what they're really doing is procrastination. Um, I'm the same way. I just now built my own personal brand uh, website. Right now, it's July 3rd, 2019, when we're recording this. Um, I've been out in the entrepreneurial world for two years, and I just started building my website two to three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So that's the smartest thing you can do. You see so many people get caught up in the fact that they they think they need to do this stuff in the beginning when in reality all you're doing is costing yourself time you're costing yourself money and you're costing yourself a lot of opportunities so don't do that in the beginning that's smart i respect that and with Um, it too like especially when you're first starting off like your business is going to change and even what you think like maybe you're really interested i mean my business name has changed like i i well first i just didn't have one And then I was always, my LLC was always the Kimber agency. And I had like a kind of like, now I look back on it, it's a little floofy name. And I was like, I don't like when I said it to different business owners, I was like, I don't feel confident saying this. So like your business name might change, the colors you like might change. So it's so important to just get down like the basics of even what you offer, like what is your offer in your business? And then going from there and building all the pretty stuff later. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, social media is good enough. Like you just get a Facebook account, Instagram right. account, like you're saying, things are going to change. Um, so it doesn't, you don't have to like, if you're first starting off in entrepreneurship for one, um, yeah, yeah, go all in, but keep an open mind. Like don't get shiny object syndrome and go from thing to thing to thing, but keep an open mind and realize that what you're starting with isn't going to be what you ended with. Like I myself just so happen to start in e-commerce, but realistically I started in uh, marketing for different businesses. And now I'm full steam ahead all in e-commerce. If I would have focused on strictly branding myself around um, uh, marketing, which is what you do, uh, it, it would have been a complete waste of time for me. You know, a lot of, a lot of money spent on the web, website design, hosting development, um, the, the marketing for that itself. It's just a bunch of wasted time and resources on something that wouldn't have even mattered to me long term. So... Uh, that's why I'm saying like Facebook and Instagram is good enough. Like brand yourself around the fact that you're an entrepreneur and just brand yourself as you go. Like you don't have to go all in on the fact that you're in a certain niche in the beginning. Once you find your muse and you can start resonating with what you're doing then go for that. Like you got the right idea. Um, but like, what does a day to day look like for you in your agency? Like start to finish, like what's it look like? Yeah. So I am very active. I actually, speaking of where you started, I started just doing marketing for like fitness based brands. And I realized that I could do a lot more than that. So change from that, but I'm extremely active person and I love to wake up moving somehow. And that could be an intense workout. It's usually some sort of cardio or it's just like a walk. If it's nice outside, I live down here in Texas. So now early in the morning is probably one of the only times you're going to see 70 degrees. So it's nice to go on a walk. I usually listen to a podcast just to wake up my body and wake up my brain. And also I found that when you wake up and like, you're going to take a walk, going to take a walk is a very easy thing. Instead of waking up and be like, Oh, I have to go to work or waking up and thinking, Oh my gosh, I have this really hard workout to do. It's so easy to get out of bed and go take a walk. So I like to wake up either with just some sort of movement And then I come home or I'm already at home. If I was just walking around, I usually have a quick breakfast, like a smoothie and then get right into work. I generally first things first take 30 minutes just to clean up my inbox because I'm really OCD on making sure that stays like my inbox is like my to-do list. So it's hopefully like not too full at one point. So just going through my emails, getting those things out of the way. And then from then on, I kind of block out my week. So 
I do digital marketing and I that's broken into two different parts. The first part is organic mm-hmm. marketing. So content creation, that's what people are posting on their Facebook, their Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. I have one Pinterest board I manage. And then the other half are paid ads. So it's the Facebook, Google, Instagram, LinkedIn ads, YouTube ads, whatever. So it's splitting okay. those two things. And if I'm trying to make content for someone and then go over to this funnel. And like, if I'm trying to do all those things in one day, I'm going to waste a lot of just mental energy trying to keep switching. So on Mondays, it doesn't always, it's not always perfect. Cause there's always going to be something that comes up, but on Mondays I like to write out all my content for all my clients. And I also generally start that on Sunday nights too, because I don't have a work schedule. So I like to start on Sunday night because I feel like I'm getting ahead of the game. And it's also just a nice way to, for me to wind down because I love writing. So it's a really kind of relaxing activity for me. So Sunday and Monday, I'm writing content for my clients. And that also includes myself. I don't usually what I'm my captions on my Instagram and my Facebook, I'm writing in real time. But a lot of times I have like notes that I write down for myself. I'm like, okay, someone asked me this question this week. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer this in my Instagram post or something like that. So just getting ideas for myself and then planning out everyone else's. I have a software that plans out everyone's posts, puts in hashtags for them. Um, it's really an amazing software. So if you're ever looking for that, definitely send me a message, ask me about it because it's amazing. It takes a lot of energy and effort out of managing 10 plus social media profiles. So really helpful when you have that. Yeah, the name of it again. What, what did you say the name of that platform was? Sprout Social. Like Sprout. Okay. I use um, I use Later. Later.com. Yeah. yeah. I love their Ooh. blog. I love their blog. I learn a lot through their blog. It's very helpful. Um, but yeah. yeah I've, never, I've never used them. I've never read their blog, but I know their uh, their platform's pretty good. It's probably similar. I liked Hootsuite. Yeah. Um, I thought I liked Hootsuite, I should say, before I switched to like a paid platform. Mm-hmm. And now that they've switched from a free option to paid, that... I'm just not going to pay for it when there's better options out there that are paid. So right, exactly. um, I switched over to later. Right. And I know a lot of people are afraid of spending money right away, but the, and I mean, it's kind of pricey depending on how many profiles you're managing, but the amount of time it saves you and just like the data connected to everything, whether it's later sprout. Um, I know there's a lot of, even if you're just a, a solo, if you're managing one page or something, you can really use Planoly, I think it's called plan only. And so all those things like that are major time savers are going to help you out in the long run and give you more time. And as no time is money. So anything you can do to streamline a process like that, it's going to be really helpful. So Sundays and Mondays are my content days, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm working on client funnels and Facebook ads. So that involves either actually building out ads doing the data for them, checking up on them or in the afternoons, usually like later in the day when I kind of hit a wall around three, I like to like learn, like take, I have like different courses I'm enrolled in and whether that's about what's new in Facebook ads and Instagram, because things are always changing and there's always videos coming out mm-hmm. on teaching you what's going on. So just staying updated with things that'll happen. I'll do at least like one kind of learning afternoon, either on Tuesday or on Thursday. It usually ends up lying on Thursday just because it's closer to the end of the week. On Wednesdays are like my personal content days. So if I'm shooting a video or doing anything for like business development, if I'm running a email sequence or just making an ebook that hasn't happened yet, but it's in the work. But Wednesdays are kind of like my personal day. And then Friday is like a catch up day. And that is anything from taking data for people. Oh, also on Wednesdays, I have like a lot of client calls. We're doing this on a Wednesday. So that lies within my like meeting type range. Out. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I, was ho- I, know, I know right before we got yeah. on this call. Yeah, exactly. I'm catch you off real quick. Um, sounds like a lot. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a week in the life of Kim. Not yeah. necessarily. That, that's fine. I'm just kidding. Right. Um, but I know right before we got on our call here for the podcast, you had a call scheduled with a client. Yeah. Did you land them? Yes, I did. <laughs> you landed them. Perfect. And exactly. Um, a lot of people think like you gotta you gotta have a million clients though. And I wanna I wanna somehow get into this conversation with you because you're doing the agency right. stuff, Perfect. which is part of my background too. But yeah. how many clients do you really need to succeed? Like I'm not I'm gonna not- ask you how many you have, but how many do you think you need? 
I mean, we talked about this before, honestly, when you have one, that is an incredible start just because once you have one client, that's when you can start to get testimonials. That's when you can start to get experience. That's when you can start to even like scaling them up. If I've seen this question actually a lot in some Facebook groups I'm a part of. It was like, I'm making my client $247,000 in revenue and I'm only charging them $1,000. Like, should I raise my prices? And it's like, if you're making them that much money, like you can scale your price. And yeah. What I do is if the ad spend is above a certain amount, that's when it starts to become a pay on performance type payment deal. So instead of just getting paid yep. a flat retainer every month, I'm getting paid on how well the ads are performing. So if you have one client, especially like, I mean, in all, all businesses are extremely scalable as long as they have the right processes in play, but you could have one client and they could be, they could be your moneymaker along that line, you never want to have all your eggs in one basket. So I say like you can have one client and be very successful, but you want to have multiple. So you can, if one client goes out of business, I just had a CBD oil company and we had to stop working together just because I didn't do ads for them. Now ads are slowly becoming more legal on Facebook for CBD, but their banking system, shut down for CBD. So actually a lot of CBD businesses right now are kind of like out of commission. So like if your yeah. biggest client all of a sudden, like something not your fault happens to their business, you want to have, you want to have something a little bit more to that, but one client is really all you Good need. To get and then I would say, even if you just have like three to five, like really awesome clients who make your job enjoyable. I know we were talking before this, like my two most recent clients, they just get so excited when anything happens, when I'm delivering data or when they're seeing leads coming through or even like likes on their page, because you know, like Facebook is yep. kind of hard to get likes these days because of the algorithm that changed. Yep. So it's so cool to see them getting excited. And if you have like a few really awesome clients that you love to do work for, like you came to work for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to work for yourself. You don't want to like be going to a yeah. job. So pretty much, pretty much just have a backup plan. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I, I, I agree. It's a good answer. It's a really good answer to have there. And just like, enjoy what you do. Like don't right. wake up and dread Mondays, wake up and, and actually look forward to the week. That's, exactly. that's good. That's perfect. That's pretty much the answer I would say too. So I, I love that. Um, so you're doing, you're, you're doing the marketing, obviously you're getting leads in here. It sounds like you've hinted on this, like the fact that Instagram is probably a big way you get business. Yeah. Actually, I know that because you told me that. But yeah. what's the number one way that you're actually getting the leads? I would say it's half and half Instagram and word of mouth, which I personally love. I'm very happy when my clients tell other people about what I'm doing and they ref that's how they find me. When I first started this, when I first started going like all in with this, I swear I like blocked out for a month and got a bunch of clients. Like it is such a blur to me how it all happened, but it was even just like reaching out to like, so when I was first starting, I didn't have like anything to show for myself except for like a few more like freelancer type gigs I did. Um, it was just like reaching out to people again on Instagram that we had like a mutual connection with. So it wasn't like I was just totally coming out of the blue, even if it was like maybe a gym and I'm like, Hey, you know, I've been like going to a gym or I do this, something similar. They see that you're like an authority in that area. So they trust you to do their marketing. Um, otherwise mm -hmm. Instagram, like the client, that I said, I talked to you just before this, she's actually from Canada and she found me because she searched the lead generation hashtag on Instagram and then went to my page. And like I said, she just like scrolled through all my stuff and she, she was like, I just felt connected to you right away. And so we got in a call and we made it happen in a very short period of time. So have a hashtag strategy, um, especially if you're not doing ads yet. For me, ads is right around the corner. And I know just because I've seen my clients be so successful with it that I know I'll be able to do that as well. But I need to be able to have, I need to hire a few more people in the ads area so I can have even just like when the clients come on that they'll be ready to rock and I know that they know what they're doing. Oh, that's that's smart. And when you're saying that people are actually finding you right there on Instagram, I just brought up your account here. And uh, a big thing a lot of people miss when it comes to like SEO um, strategies and stuff with Instagram is you can actually put keywords yeah. directly right in your name 
and yeah. right there on your actual description. Yeah. And it looks like that's exactly what you do. You have mark right now. You have marketing expert in, in yeah. your name. So I'm sure when people are starting the process to look for a marketing expert, they're typing that in right on Instagram and you pop up like yeah, that's actually, genius. Then you have other hashtags and stuff right, right. there within your uh, um, account. So that's, that's good. That's yeah. good. A lot of people miss that too. That's right. another little nugget right there. That if you do that, that's, that's how you can get some, what the kids saying nowadays, clout. How you can get some clout these days is by yeah. doing that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you're, so, as you're starting, your Instagram is like your website. Like you can use your Instagram like a website just because of that searchability yeah. that you just brought up. You can do, use it as your website. It has the same capabilities, well, similar capabilities as a website might have for people searching you. Right. And it's so powerful. Like a lot of people, I don't know why everybody hates hashtags nowadays, but hashtags are still like extremely powerful. Yeah. And you can take a strategy. I'm going to be recording a video on this very, very soon. But you can take a strategy where you have, let's say, three columns, right? You got, call it, call it large hashtags, which is hashtags over 1 million, right? Um, and then you have a medium category, where, which would be hashtags around like the 100, 50,000 to 100,000 mark, just for example, somewhere in there. And then you have the small category of hashtags that are um, around the, the 5 to 10,000. Uh, one of the, the numbers I'm throwing out there, the million, the hundred thousand, uh, ten thousand, that means that many posts have mm -hmm. tagged that hashtag in it. Right. And when you create a bucket of hashtag groups, mm -hmm. you want to like, Instagram's limit is, I think it's like 32 yeah. or 34 hashtags on post, but I don't use all that. I use 20. So if you use uh, five, right? Like let's say five at the top there, five in the large group. So you're targeting things within the niche or whatever that you're, you're posting for. You're targeting um, large hashtags. So you're automatically getting put in front of a large group of people initially. Okay, Then you have the medium group, which would be around the 100,000 mark, somewhere in there. And, and you're getting put in front of um, people on those posts. You're not going to scale down the list as fast, right? The, the one that has the million on it, they're going to, you're going to get pushed down the list very, very fast because people are constantly using those hashtags, right? Medium list you're, you're not going to get pushed down as fast you're going to be at the top for you know maybe a week whatever and then you have the small group where you're you're constantly going to be like at the top because nobody really targets that much people do still tend to search them so when you can put together a strategy on your instagram where you target um like 20 hashtags and you spread out five in the large group 10 in the medium group and five in the small group um, then you're constantly going to be relevant and people are going to be seeing your posts nonstop on, on Instagram every single time you post something. Mm -hmm. So that's a smart thing you can do there with, with Instagram. Like it's so powerful. Like that's your brand. That's your business when you're starting off. And you want to make sure that that's right because that's how people are going to find you. And that's how you make money in the beginning. Yep. Um, so you're a funnel hacker, right? That's it. That's over there in your profile, right over on ClickFunnels, funnel hackers. Yes. Uh, a lot of people out there, uh, have you got the seven figure plaque yet? I haven't. I know people who have. So I, and it's awesome because just knowing people who have and knowing where they've been, you know that you're able to do it. Like I think a lot of stuff, especially when you're becoming an entrepreneur and you're in that space, it's like, oh, I never could do that. But once you know people who have, you're like, well, shoot, we're like the same. I, you know, like I can do that. Oh, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's really cool to see. That's definitely a goal of mine in the next year, I would say. No, you're on pace for it though, right? I know you're doing really, really well. You yeah. You could probably hit it probably. But they just had their ceremony for their awards. I, I think it was like a month or two ago. Yeah, I think it's um, I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but I, I, you should probably are going to be on pace for it. I know you're you're killing the game yeah, right now. Um, I, I'd probably have it. Oh. I, don't, I wouldn't have the eight figure one, <laughs> the gold or the platinum, whatever color it is. Um, but if I would have the seven figure one, if I were to actually, when I was doing e-commerce, like really, really, really heavy and I kind of slowed down so I could do the podcast and, and the content stuff here. But when I was really heavily immersed into the game, that was all I was doing. Um, I would have had the seven figure one this year. It would have been pretty cool to hang on the wall back here behind me, but, uh, we're going to have to hold off till next year for that. So I'm sure me and you are going to be there at the same ceremony getting awarded that because when I do jump back into this. I'm literally just going to click funnels. So on that platform, one, they're, they're really good platform. And, and two, I want the plaque. Yeah, so, so that's the best part. <laughs> that's you heavy yeah, you awesome. advertise heavily online there. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're kind of an expert in your field. Your, your Instagram bio says it. 
what's your preferred platform? Like what are the best ad platforms to advertise on in 2019? Right. So it definitely depends on the industry you're in. We kind of talked about this right before we got on this call, but my clientele right now is kind of half e-commerce and half professional services. That's going to be like chiropractors, doctors, real estate agents, insurance agents, people like fitness coaches, whatever. So for things like that, especially like let's use a chiropractor for an example. I love Google for that because people Google, I need like, I need a chiropractor or like, chiropractors in Dallas or real estate agents in Dallas or something like that. So for those types of services, I love Google. Facebook is also really beneficial because the targeting is a lot more, Mm -hmm. you can target people based on if they like eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Like you can go so in depth on Facebook targeting. So if you're really looking for a specific type of person, Facebook is amazing, but I believe in having a healthy mix of those things because like one of my clients is a, um, a meal prep service type thing. They have healthy meals, healthy options, and they get most of their referrals off of Instagram, but they also make about like 25 grand a month off of Google ads. So they make a large portion of their revenue from Google ads, which is awesome. And of course, social media. So I don't think you can have one without the other. I think one space I've seen, and this is just because I have a lot of friends in the space, like roofing or things that are really specific that you like, you really, cause everyone could kind of need a chiropractor, right? But like roofing, one, you need to have a house Two, you need to have a roof that needs to be done. So that's more of like a Google thing where I'm not going to try and target someone like that on Facebook as you're just not going to see as much of a return. So you have to think of like who you're trying to target and what space that they're in, what position are they in in their life that they're going to need this because right. it's target- like, uh, Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's like uh, e-commerce related with, I, I made all my money in e-commerce with, with Facebook ads and I, right. I, I made a little bit with Google, but uh, it's with Facebook, it's more of like a social aspect of it or Instagram where you're trying to drive impulse on the sale when yeah, say, like, they like, meet, like the person seeing the ad might not be interested in it. Right. But the right. uh, Google ad way of doing it when you're doing like search driven, like somebody is actually searching for, for that product right then and they're looking to buy it that exact day. So typically if you can master search result ads um, when it comes to like e-commerce or, or a product driven stuff like that, like you're, you're going to make a lot more money. In the beginning, um, I'm definitely with you where you want to diversify it up because there's still a stupid amount of money to be made on Facebook. Right. Facebook right now is doing the same thing that the internet did in the beginning when when blogs when when the internet started. What was it? Ninety five uh, blogs came out, right? Everybody was a blogger. Then in the late nineties, um, like nineteen ninety nine, the, the dot com thing happened, and then uh, you got email marketing was the big thing to do. Like the click through rate and the open rate and everything was like 25% on average, 30%. So that was a hot thing to do then. Okay. And then right after that was Google ads. Okay. 2002 or three, I want to say what was Google ads. So you could get, you get traffic stupid cheap there and, and Google ads still isn't dead, but it was obviously way better back then. I wasn't advertising it then with them at that time, but I, I do know that they were really, really good. And then after that, um, I mean, you start to see Facebook taking over, right? And then Instagram now. And, and the big thing that's starting to trend right now, and if you look at these all these other past advertising results, LinkedIn is doing the exact same thing that they did. Like LinkedIn is going to be the next big platform to get on. Okay. And there's other platforms too. Like uh, you got a search engine that, that's up and coming right now, DuckDuckGo. So you can get traffic on DuckDuckGo, even though they advertise no ads. You can still run ads on their platform. For, for stupid cheap and they don't have as much traffic as Google, but you can still, they still have a lot of traffic and you can get that. You can get results from them for like 10 times cheaper than Google. Same thing with bank. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's is, you're right. You're right. 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 Um, big wow. thing in entrepreneurship. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. We both said that a bunch of times, but uh, I, I think where most people start to succeed and actually break away to like winning in life when, when they jump out into this crazy world is, is getting over procrastination. So I think a big thing you do probably in the beginning, in the morning, is, is you go for like a walk, like you said, that helps you clear your mind. Like you're not looking at your phone, like right off the bat in the morning, you wait a couple hours before you can get on your email and text and all that stuff. Right. What, 
how do I want to say this here? How do you beat procrastination? I've never been a procrastinator. People are going to hate that answer. I've always like, I've always had my homework done the night before. Like I've just never been a procrastinator, but I have, I mean, there are those moments like, um, and I'll, I'll give two answers for this. So I did like when I worked at a nine to five, I would procrastinate because when you really don't want to do something, you just put it off. So one, if you're doing things that you really enjoy doing and it's exciting to go to work. And like I said about my ideal clients, like I love doing work for them. So it's exciting for me to be like, all right, like I'm waking up, like how can I make Marshall's ads better today? You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. it's exciting for me to do that. And then a second, this is something that my mom has always told me she's, which is like, just do it. Like I used to be obsessed with Nike when I was younger. She would say like, just do it. Like, as soon as you start doing it, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. It's going to be easy. You're going to be done. As soon as you start, like you only can be done once you start. I actually just this morning, I was listening to Russell Brunson's marketing secrets podcast. And he said that a hack that he uses is like putting his phone on do not disturb, which I do sometimes. And then I've missed calls before from clients, but it's fine. It's like I'm focused. I'm in the zone. And he, sets his alarm like his clock for an hour and for one hour he's focusing on this task he's not looking at his computer he's not looking at his phone because anyone that really needs to reach him unless it's his family can probably wait an hour after an hour of work he like stands up kind of moves around and then sits down another hour focus and I actually did that this morning and it was like the tasks I were doing were like there was a good flow of things but it was really good because as soon as I saw myself like click open my phone, I was like, wait, my hour's not over yet. And I put down my phone and like went back to work on the task at hand. So I really like that little pre- mm-hmm. productivity hack is setting alarms for yourself and knowing like, okay, in an hour I'm going to be able to get up and move around. But right now I'm working. So it is really hard. And this is something like my mom and my friends say to me all the time. They're like, I don't know how you stay so focused. Like when you, there's so many distractions around you. So yeah. you definitely need to like, always one, have your why with you. Like, why am I doing this? One, I need to survive. I need to make money. But two, like for the greater good of like helping a lot of different people and everything like that. So as long as you really like what you're doing, and obviously there are some days where work isn't going to be as fun. Maybe you need to switch up your environment. Like maybe I'm at my house right now. I have my little desk table here, but some days if I'm feeling like kind of stuck, I'll go to like Starbucks or something. Cause literally like I can't get up and do my laundry at Starbucks. I can't get up and do like household things at Starbucks. So just working in different areas also very helpful. Yeah. What I kind of did, a big thing that helped me get over it because a, a big thing I did when I when it comes to procrastinating, I'm still kind of bad about it. I'm, I'm working on this. Yeah. But the two big things I do is right in the morning, I touch on the first thing in the morning when I first wake up, grab my phone. Last thing I do at night before I fall asleep, grab my phone. So something that's working really, really well that's helping me stop procrastinating sleeping yeah. is plugging my phone in out in the kitchen or living room. That's and then when I wake up in the morning, I can't grab it. I got to get out of bed and go out there. And same thing. I set that alarm for one hour. I won't do anything like phone related um, until the hour's done. Like I won't do anything with like my email. I'm getting my computer um, but I won't respond to the emails. Um, I right. don't. I don't get on my my messengers and stuff. Respond to those. Um, so same thing. That's smart. It's a good thing to do. And a big book that, in my opinion, because procrastination it may not be for you, but it's a big deal for most entrepreneurs, especially starting out. And people procrastinate, like we said, with with building the website. They procrastinate with getting business cards, getting the pair, whatever, all that stuff in the beginning. And a big and, it, and it's fear based. Like they just don't know what to do. Traditionally, right. most people don't know what to do. So in your case, when you're starting out, it sounds like you were kind of brought into into your industry and your space because it was like a passion. Like you didn't come into doing what you're doing because of the money. I can see that. You came in because you genuinely enjoy doing what you're doing. So you don't have to worry about procrastinating. Um, most people where they where why they procrastinate uh, when it comes to their actual business work is because it's not actually their passion and 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 they're doing it for money, right? right? So something that I think every entrepreneur needs to read, every aspiring business owner, pretty much everybody in the world, um, the most important book, in my opinion, to read is a book called Outwitting the Devil, Napoleon Hill. I don't know if you've read it, um, but it's a very, very, very important book to read, Outwitting the Devil. It's, uh, now, it's not, it's not a religious book at all. Um, I don't want to like push that. 
on people and, and get the wrong, give them the wrong impression. It's not religious based at all. They, they talk about um, God and the devil as positivity and negative energy. So mm-hmm. super important book to read. If like, like it, it'll clear up a lot of stuff and uh, really explain why things are happening the way they're happening in your life. And, and, and it kind of like, it's one of those aha blow my mind moments. So definitely check that one out. We're going to link it down there in the descriptions on everything we're um, sure. posting this podcast on and the video. So check it out down there. You can click over on the link. I'm just going to link you over to Amazon. So if you want to buy it, buy it. But uh, did we talk about websites and how they're dead? I'm forgetting here. We're, 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 we we're talking for a while. We have it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> our because I know you're big into the funnel building. You're a funnel hacker. Yeah. Are traditional websites dead? I because I'm going to take a strong stance on it. I'm going to say yes. I think certain industries are more prone. They can be a lot more successful with a funnel. So one industry that comes to mind that maybe actually no, they're I want to say they're dead because I'm going to take a strong stance on this. So and one way that is really an awesome way. I'm going to take it from Russell Brunson, the guy who invented click funnels is that yep. the difference between a website and a click funnel is that when you tell someone, Hey, go visit my website. It's kind of like me handing you a, like a pamphlet and walking away. Like here's some information. See you later. Good luck navigating around everything that's happening here. When you have a click funnel, exactly. it's like all of a sudden, like your best salesman is guiding them through the process. So you're really only giving them like there is one product that they're interested in. You're only really giving them one option. There are generally options to upsell or downsell you if you bought something, or if you didn't buy something. But there's only really one option. And the only button is either to like get more information or to buy and enter your credit card information. So it is extremely streamlined. And this is what I did because some people they're like, well, I don't want, and this is what I felt like. I didn't want someone to go visit my page and then automatically go into the funnel. Like what if they just want to find out about me? And then automatically it's like, Oh, digital. Mar-. Like I didn't need all this. Like people, I think it kind of looks not scammy, but I have a hero funnel. So it looks like a tra- traditional website. So there's still like the only button you can really click as you're scrolling through is to either watch a video click now and like give me your information or like a contact form. So pretty much all things leading into connecting with me. And then at the top, if there's like a product tab, they could be like products, marketing services, and then they click on it and then they go into my click funnel. So I think click funnels are amazing for that just because there's like no, another analogy that Russell Brunson used was like, it's kind of like a football team. Like you're trying to get to like, the ball, like the quarterback, like you're trying to get to the quarterback, but there's all these people trying to block you and defend you from like the information you really want to get. Like maybe it's a, like a, you read their about story and then you read this and you read that and you're like, why was I even on your page? Especially if it's like a e-commerce website or something and they clicked on the ad and it's like, Oh, well I could have some pillows and I could have some sheets and I could have some blankets. But like, what's I even come here for? Well, they they don't have this. I'm just going to leave or something like that. So I do think the website is dead. I think click yeah. are amazing, so I'm going to throw that plug in there right now and leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ClickFunnels is good. Um, like I said earlier, I don't like I I use Click I've uh-huh. used ClickFunnels, but I don't use them regularly. Right. Yeah, but I will. I will because, like I said, I just started doing the website. Um, right. Traditional websites, yes, they're dead. If the intent is to like for a funnel for like a sale, I think you should have a face. And then you connect your funnels as like subdomains to the website. It's kind of like what a funnel is. A lot of people don't know what a funnel is. Mm-hmm. I didn't even really know what a funnel was until the 10X event um, yeah. down in Miami this year. When Russell got on stage, he was talking about it. And, and, and the way he was explaining it, and at that time I was doing e-commerce and Shopify. So I was doing pretty good then too. But the way he was explaining it, um, like it really clicked with me. I'm like, dude, this is what I'm already doing. Like, but I didn't understand it. I didn't understand what I was doing. And then when I, when I, when I left the event that night and I went back and I I took a step back and I'm like, well, Russell's saying this, this, and this. And obviously the guy's a genius. He wrote dot com secrets created, um, click funnels. I'm like, dude, he's like, I can take what he's saying, the free hell you just saying on stage there, implement this into my business. And, and, And that's when I got massive success. Once I realized that websites are completely dead and to do a funnel-driven 
uh, website because the funnel is a subsidiary of a website. It's still technically right. a website. It's not a traditional website. Mm-hmm. Um, once I implemented that, got rid of the homepage, got rid of the contact us, pay all that stuff, yeah. things blew up because there's no distractions. Okay. Uh, Russell Brunson created, uh, I don't want to say this. Russell Brunson created the digital funnel. In my opinion, Jordan Belfort created the actual sales funnel itself, like speaking to people. Like if you read his book, Straight Line Selling, Way of the Wolf, like his uh, straight line selling approach, the, the one that made millionaires in his company and teach, taught people how to sell anything to anybody at any time, that's all he's teaching. He's just teaching you how to talk in a funnel. So there's no distractions. There's just a straight line to the sale. Exactly. And, and what Russell did is he took that same principle and he brought it to digital and it works. It's insane. It almost right. seems too good to be true, but it's really, yeah. really good no, stuff. Not, not yet. <laughs> good, good, good. And, 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 and I know I see you out there always posting about like the fitness industry. I've seen you help blow up some brands in, in the fitness industry as well. When it comes to working out, mm-hmm. I may slack at this myself, but how important is working out? Um, not necessarily just to entrepreneurs, but just to people in general. Yeah. I mean, I, and I have always said this, I think when you can, and I did like fitness competitions too. So I think that's where I really saw like my mind change, but that also comes with growing up. Cause I started doing those in my early twenties. So I think that when you are committed to a long-term fitness goal, even if that goal is just working out five days a week and, or if it's losing 10 pounds or if it's building muscle mass, that's not something you can buy. It's not something that you can get overnight. It's not something that you can do here and there and see success. So the fact that you have to do these little things every single day, you have to work out, you have to eat right, you have to get enough sleep, like those little actions build up over time. And that's a lot like building a business. And it's a lot like being in a successful career. It's not even like it's for everyone. That's just entrepreneurs. Like if you can do those little things every single day and believe that they're going to benefit you in the long run and get over the like, Oh, I ate a salad today. Like am I 10 pounds lighter type thing? Like if you are not in it for the immediate satisfaction and you can do something long-term that is going to benefit you massively. And then also just being uncomfortable, like being and working so hard that you feel like you can't breathe or like, doing a 30 second interval, having 30 seconds of rest and then doing it again, like just your mind. And I always say this to people as like, this is the hardest it's going to get right here. So if you push through this, like you're going to have a break at the end and you're going to breathe. And we kind of talked about like, does the grind ever stop? And it's kind of like fitness. Like you're going to work hard, work hard, work hard. And then you get to recover for two days. And that's, that's the good part. Like, so it's, there's so many parallels with fitness and business. And it's funny because when I have like my fitness based clients, I bring them up all the time. And it's just like when, if I'm consulting someone on like branding and like kind of building a personal brand, it's like, you see me show up every single day. So it's like, how can, if I don't show up every single day, how can I expect anyone else to like want to get on board with me? So if you show up for yourself every single day, that's going to spread into other areas of your life, which is really the best part. Right. That's good. And, and, and you see a lot of people, uh, I'm going to compare this to what a lot of people do. And, and I think I got to slow down here. I don't want to say this. I'm going to compare this to smoking weed. Okay? okay. Big thing. A lot of people have to smoke weed if they want to function during the day. Mm-hmm. When you work out and then you smoke weed, uh, compare the two against each other. The same thing happens in your brain. Obviously, smoking is easier because it gets yeah. job done in a couple minutes, but <laughs> your, your brain releases dopamine. Mm-hmm. And, and when you're working out, you're doing it in a more healthy way and the same thing's happening. So um, it's, when, when, you're, when people work out when it comes to entrepreneurship, it, it's, showing like a big, um, it's showing a big amount of like self-control. Right, yeah. self control and, and self discipline. So, what I used to do before I would stay up until like six, seven a.m. in the morning working yeah. was I would I'd sleep on a normal schedule and I would wake up early, like five, six o'clock in the morning, even if I didn't want to, and I would go to the gym. And it was the hardest thing in the world to do, which is exactly why I did it because I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to see how mentally strong I was, so that that would actually set the pace for my day. It's just like what Marines do. In, in the military, like the first thing they do in the morning is they make their bed so they can have that self, um, 
accomplishment that they already achieved something right when they wake up in the morning. And then that sets the pace and the energy for the rest of the day. And the fact that you're already successful, you've already did something productive. So yeah. that's, that's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So, I mean, what's, what's next for you? What are you doing next? Yeah. I mean, I don't even, right now I did kind of allude to this. I'm starting to build my team a little bit more. I have one person working under me right now and another person who I'm kind of training to do the ad stuff, yeah. ad stuff to do the advertising, to do the Facebook advertising. Um, and it's, I've kind of like bounced around. I'm like, do I just get like a permanent freelancer who's someone I have hire on like Upwork or Fiverr? But I really want to have someone who is either local or somebody that I know that wants to learn and that wants to get into a new space. Cause when I was starting, I would have loved to kind of be taken under someone else's wing and be like, Hey, I'm going to help you. Like, I'm going to give you, like, I have clients, I have people you can work with that you can build your skills. And then if you want to go on and do this by yourself, that's fine. If you want to work with me forever, that's also fine. But I want to start growing my team. And I'm at that point where I have enough clients now that I can, feel comfortable doing that. And I want to start stepping back a little bit so I can be focusing more on business development in general, just having more of me out there. Like I want to have some eBooks and like little intro offers and just more things like that. I want to have a podcast like we're doing right now, just those little, they're not little things. They're really big things, but they're things that when you're working with client stuff all day, it's hard to, have a bunch of hour long podcasts. And no, but what you're doing is, is you're walking, you're learning to walk before you run. Yes. And, and so many people starting off, like they want to make, they want to start entrepreneurship because they think they're smart and they're going to create an automated flow of income, right? Because the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So what they're going to do is they're going to come in they're going to create seven different businesses and they're going to automate them all, right? right? That's not how it works. So most people try that and it fails miserably. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you're doing is you're learning to walk before you run and, and, and nobody's doing that. People are coming in and they're, they're expecting to automate their work right from the start. And that's just a recipe for disaster. You're going to fail. So the way you're doing it is you're, um, getting clients obviously, and you're getting to a point where you can actually afford to monetize and white label and outsource your work. Um, so now you can start actually diversifying your, your time and your energy to other things like a podcast. That you got to launch them because podcasts, um, there's a million different benefits from them. The ad revenue is stupid right. that you can make on it. You cut them up into a bunch of different content like I do. Mm-hmm. Um, my followers get annoyed by it. But uh, yeah, like that's, that's, that's the way to do it. And, and, and that's something that definitely frustrates me with so many people is they try to run before they learn how to walk. Right. So well, I, mean, um, like, I think a lot of people... I, are interested in the space. So like, I just want to sit around and create content all day. It's like, you have to give people a reason to want to listen to you. You need to have experience. You need to have knowledge. You need to have like reasons for people to want to listen to you. Like if two years ago, if I was like, here's how to do your digital marketing, people would be like, do you even, do you even do digital marketing? Like, what do you even mean? So it just doesn't make sense to try and teach people how to do something until you've actually done it. So I think yeah, people, like everybody wants to be an influencer. Yeah, the information <laughs> game right now is everybody so wants to be an people are like so excited to get on it. It's like, no, you have to you gotta do the work first. <laughs> That's the important part. Yeah, like you got to know how to do it at first. You got to be like, like I had a podcast a couple, a couple, couple episodes ago there with Mike, Mike Ro- Robison, Robison whatever the last name is, he, uh, he, he was talking about a very good point. You got to be a practitioner before you can be the consultant, right? Yeah. You got to actually be able, you had to have been able to do it before you can start teaching people how to do it. Um, so like if, if I'm going to learn in any industry, uh, I always make sure that the person that I'm going to be learning from has actually done it for themselves. Like a very regular thing I'll have people do, like I'll get people messaging me all the time wanting to help me with e-commerce, yeah. even though I'm doing pretty well with it. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm definitely willing to let you be my mentor, but how about just show me your bank statement? Please? Right. Show me how much money you got in your bank account. And if they won't do it, then they're not going to mentor me. Right. I'll, I'll learn from anybody though. I you know, like like the, the cliche saying goes, I'll, I'll learn from the CEO, but I'll also shake the janitor's hand and hear what he has to say. Right. Um, I don't care who you are. Uh, you could have a million followers or one follower. I'll learn from you. Right. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta actually know what you're talking about first is, is I guess what I'm trying to get at there. And so many people that they, they'll start off being an expert without actually doing the work. Right. Um, <laughs> but you do a lot of like Facebook ads, right? 
Yes. Do you do like lead generation stuff? Like how do you how do you structure your Facebook ad for your so, clients? You mean like the text or like the like the ad landing well, page, like, like how we get there? When you're like running the campaign. So you run your campaigns, right? Okay. Uh, you do like a lead generation objective, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, probably, yeah. well, it depends on what you're selling. If you're doing an e-com client, it's probably conversion driven. But like, uh, what's your secret sauce to ads? And you can take this, you can take this question wherever you want it to, because yeah, so there's so I, many cool things with Facebook and I'm going to hit on some too. Yeah. So I think the secret thing is like, it's so, it's, I mean, it is a secret, but so not a secret. So you, well, I think a lot of people, whether it's a business owner who thinks that they can do their ads themselves, or if it is someone new to marketing that hasn't maybe had a lot of training and they just try and put like one ad up. Like, okay, I'm going to have this ad. It's going to talk to everybody. And that's, we're going to make some money. Like, that's not how it works. So, oh, I wish I had my whiteboard cleared off. So you have like your ad campaign. And that's essentially your goal. Like our objective is to sell our product to this group of people. Awesome. In order to do this. Very general. Yeah. And then underneath your campaign, you have your ad sets. So your ad sets are where you can start to get a little bit more particular in who you're talking to. So I'm not, I don't want to have an ad that's speaking to me and speaking to my mom the same way, because the words that you're going to use are probably going to be a lot different in order for us to like to catch our attention and the pictures. So your ad sets, which is under your ad campaign, which you know, but listeners might not are different ways to talk to different groups of people. So they're all going to be different audiences. Underneath your ad sets or your ads. So this is where you're actually getting into your ads. And this is where you get to test out different things like pictures and ad copy and um, anything, colors, whatever it might be, call to actions. That's where you get to put in the real testing. So it's not going to be that you can click one button and put an ad out there. There's so much testing that goes on. And I think that's something that is, unless it's an awesome, like, I last two clients I've signed have been really awesome, but they understand that it does take some testing. It's not like everything is going to be golden from the beginning and you have to like stay the course and keep testing things and know that, like I said, when you try and talk to everybody, you're talking to nobody. So just like you were talking about when you're talking about funnels, like how are you talking to this person? Where are they in the purchasing phase? Are, do they know about you? Are they kind of familiar with you? Um, do they know about you? They're familiar with your service and now it's time to sell to them. So within even like the campaign, the ad sets and the ads, you have like top of funnel, people don't know about you, middle of the funnel, they know that you might be a solution, but they're not set on you. And then bottom of the funnel where it's like, okay, they know everything. You just got to like get them in. So I think my secret sauce is just understanding that layout to be quite honest, because when I first got into advertising, I didn't know that's how it worked. And I didn't think that I had to make 50 different ads to find out which ad was going to be the best one out of like, right. the future is going to like, I mean, I was actually for the insurance agent. We, that was the most recent ad that I did. I was floored by the ad that did the best. I did not think it was but so, but I'm not the customer. I'm not the client. So I have to test out those things. So just doing testing and not being too set on anything either, because I even had one client that their landing page was just a ton of paragraphs and it was like about biking shorts, like that you would wear cycling. Yeah. And some paragraphs, but they were really proud. They're really passionate about their product. And then we tested it like the two landing pages, one with all the words and one with bullet points and the bullet points converted so much better because people saw like, okay, this is the information I need. Awesome. I'm going to buy this versus the paragraphs. It's like, wow, that's really overwhelming. But they believe that they're like, everyone needs to know this because our product is so great, but people actually don't need to know all that in order to make a sale. So just not being afraid right. to test things and not being able to admit to your client, like it might take us three weeks to figure this out because everyone's product and client and business is different. I could have worked with a million like insurance agents, but like everyone a little different. So just being able to test and right. understand the structure. Keeping it, keeping it simple. Keep it simple, yes. stupid, right? Right, Another exactly. Like, thing. The so with Facebook, simple. Facebook, Instagram ads, you know, pretty much the same thing. People just like try to like overcomplicate it when when in reality, if you want to like know how to do it correctly, 
literally just do it the way that it's laid out. There's no superstitions out there. A lot of people think you do this, you do this, then Facebook's uh, not going to send you out to people. Like there's, I guess there's stuff where you can get like more reach if you like traffic driven ads or conversion driven ads, but there's no like superstitions with it. And if you want to like be successful with Facebook ads, just literally do it the way that Facebook tells you to do it. They have an entire help center of forms that and explain how to do it. Yeah. No, I totally so uh, kind of one of the things that I see people like really, really struggling with, and, and, it, and, it, and it blows my mind that people struggle with this, but they forget the fact that Facebook's an auction bidding platform. Mm-hmm. It, it's an auction bidding platform. And by default, Facebook's bid strategy is going to be set to a default lowest cost. By default, it's, it's lowest cost, which mm-hmm. secretly means Facebook spend as much money as you need to get the sale done. So what people try to do is they'll, if, if they're getting like low conversions at a lower budget or they're not really getting the results they want, like they'll scale their budget up. Yeah. And then they think that that's going to solve their problems. When in reality, that just makes their problem worse because your, your problem is just laying right there with yeah, your bid or, you know, like you said, it could be your funnel too. It could be a million different things, but uh-huh. just like literally follow the steps that, that Facebook lays out there and, and you're going to be pretty good. Um, like my massive strategy with, with Facebook uh, advertising that that really has made me a ton of money and made my my mentor my mentees or clients or students whatever you want to call them um, a lot of money is uh, the overlap option. I don't know if you've even been familiar with this, but if you go into the audience tab section, you can see an audience overlap on your on your uh, your, your ads or, or audiences you're going to run. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people do like single interest ad sets to like target people. So if you're going to be doing, um like any kind of niche like uh what's something here camera you're gonna do some <laughs> camera bunch yeah. of cameras you're gonna be doing a camera uh product like you're gonna be selling this a like, canon camera right you can target on facebook you can target canon and then you can target kodak right but if you create those audiences and actually test them against each other they're going to be the same people so what a lot of people are doing is they're being taught the wrong information they're creating those single interest ad sets. They're testing them against each other. And what they're really doing is they're bidding themselves up because Facebook, by default, unless you change it manually, is going to be a lowest cost per bid mm-hmm. um, strategy. So when you do that, you're just competing against yourself. So literally, if you just want to succeed pretty good with Facebook, just make sure you're not overlapping with yourself right. and you're going to be fine, mm-hmm. right? So you keep increasing. It's just, it's just, it's just crazy. That's the biggest thing in, in e-commerce. I don't know if you see a lot of it, but it's something that really, really frustrates me. Mm-hmm. That I see a lot of people teaching in their courses or YouTube videos or whatever is single interest ad sets, and then just test a bunch of different things yeah. when you're overlapping. You're just literally bidding yourself up. That's why you're not winning. So right. I mean, since we've been recording here for the past hour, I've just been getting a bunch of notifications on a store here with uh, one of one of my students that we just upped his budget last night to awesome. um, $150 a day. So it's about four o'clock here. Mm-hmm. So that means we've we've got a little bit of time left in the day here. See if I can show you without like um, without exposing his name. Yeah, yeah I can probably do that. You see, oh, I see. Yeah, well, come I around. See. You got to see this. Like he's spending one hundred and fifty dollars a day, and when you just keep things simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, show his name. Oh wow, that's amazing. Like he's at, we're at like a hundred dollars in spend or, or something like. Uh, it's got to be somewhere around a hundred dollars in spend because it's only one hundred and fifty on the day. But like, just that's don't overcomplicate it. You want to make a lot of money. Like money should never be your only motivating factor. It's always definitely something to talk about. But if you want to make a lot of money, don't overcomplicate it. There's not superstitions out there. Okay. Exactly. But uh, I mean, that's really all we got here. I mean, we've been over a lot of good stuff here. We've been rolling for a little over an hour and, and I'm sure we could talk all day. Uh, usually how these podcasts go, uh, right. you get a lot of good questions. And you definitely answer a lot of good stuff. I learned stuff from you for sure. Um, I know the, the listeners are doing a lot of good stuff. Good stuff. But, uh, I mean, you got anything else, anything you want to leave everybody off with, you know, maybe like a tip, maybe something you want to tell people that are just starting out. I would say have a game plan, but don't be afraid to change it. Um, you see, I have a whiteboard behind me. I have like my to-do list. I have like my long-term goals. I have things I know I need to get done, but you can't get upset when things change and you have to 
redirect because you need to have a quick bounce back race or rate race. You need to have a quick bounce back rate and you need to keep moving forward. So you have to be flexible, but you also need a plan. Professionals have plans. You are an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. You're not just hanging out trying to make money. You still need to have a plan and just stick to it and do those little things every single day. And then eventually after you stay consistent, you're going to reap the benefits. Exactly. Don't give up. Don't give up in the face of adversity. Just laugh at it. Yes. Like you're going to fall on your face. You're going to fall on your face so many times. And as long uh, as but embrace that. Forward, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who was that? Uh, uh, Denzel Washington. I said that in a, a couple of videos ago there. Uh, as long as you're falling forward, right? Because it hurts a hell of a lot less to fall forward. And at least you can see right. where you're going to hit. So next time you fall, you can brace yourself, right? You're falling backwards, you can't brace yourself and you don't know what you're going to be hitting. So yeah, fall and fail your way forward. Like failing is so essential to it. This is a ma- major, major wow. subject that covers. Failing is so essential to success. Like if I'm not failing every single day, I'm doing something wrong. Right. Well, then That's you're not- how you progress. I embrace, I love failing. Okay. Like I, I actually take a greater passion in failing than I do in winning. Like winning just happens. Okay. When you're comfortable with failure and you embrace that, winning just happens. Right. Exactly. So keep moving forward. Awesome. 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 Guys, go follow Kim. I got all of her contact info down there. Well, not really phone number and all that stuff, you know, but go and follow her on social media. She does some really good stuff. Um, she just put a picture up like a day or two ago where she was swimming with a dolphin. Uh, yep. But like, go follow her content, guys. She puts up awesome stuff out there. Uh, not many, not many women in this industry, uh, just in this industry. Period. Like, you don't see a lot of people hustle that are women in this industry, let alone as hard as she does. And there's no yep. guys that are even out there really matching her <laughs> talent. So, if you want to learn how to completely be a badass, just literally go follow her. Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, whatever. Right down there in the description, guys. Go listen to what she has to say because she is a real entrepreneur. Kim, thanks for coming on today. We really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. All right. Awesome. We'll talk to you. Awesome. That was so much fun. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Honestly, I really appreciate all the feedback I've been getting. If you haven't been giving me any feedback, it really, really helps me. It shows the search engines that people are actually engaging with my content. So if you did like what I had to say today, um, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and a like. If you didn't like what I had to say today, give me a big thumbs down or a dislike because either way, honestly, it helps the show out. It shows the search engines, like I said, that people are engaging with our content. And furthermore, if you really like what we have to say, uh, just make sure to subscribe here to the show. Subscribe to it, engage with the content, leave a, leave a comment, leave a like, share it with somebody else. Help us get the message out there, guys. This is a completely free show. I don't charge for any of my content. So all the help I can get, I really, really appreciate it. But make sure you stay tuned, guys, because next week's episode may be even better than this week's episode. So make sure you check it out. I record these in advance, so I definitely know that uh, every single week, uh, what's what's going to be coming, what's not going to be coming. But make sure you check this one out because next week's episode is really, really good, guys. I have some really good points to get in, in there. And I got a really special guest on there that you're probably not expecting. So make sure to go over and check that show out because I promise you, you're going to pull some insane keys out of that one, guys. But until then, we'll see you next time.